Well, hello, well, and welcome back to J Studio. We're going to talk today about ex our measuring resonances and doing input, sh you know, calibrating input sh shaper for Clipper. Um, this is going to be on my Thinker SE, uh, about which I've done several videos already. Uh, I've been waiting for a working accelerometer to get here for a while. Finally, just ordered two more. I'm going to some others I think I'm just going to return. Uh, one came came in and was throwing errors. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But like now I have two that both of them have worked for this particular test. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, them in just a second. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to take you to where you're going to want to go if you want to think about uh, tuning input shaper for your thinker or for that matter, any printer with an accelerometer, you're going to need to go to uh, Clipper's website and check out their documents. I'm going to take you to uh, measuring resonances, and uh, here we go. Uh, I'll kind of look at that, look at that site together. Uh, the first thing you're going to wind up having to do is get an ADXL 345 uh, accelerometer, and uh, the the version that I got is blue, but the pinout looks like the red pinout on the diagram that's provided here. So uh, I'll show you the actual accelerometers here in just a second. That's the one measured to do the x-axis and then the one down here with the wires on it right now just finished measuring the y-axis. Um, and uh, that is going to uh, be necessary getting those uh, hooked up appropriately um, to both the chip and the Raspberry Pi for you to be able to measure the accelerometer residences, residences for each of those axes. So what you're then going to have to do, um, you're going to have to either construct a cable or get a cable that has these little uh, uh, little connectors, uh, the GPIO type connectors, and then you're going to hook up your connectors appropriately to the Pi. Um, see if I can get in there. There you go. Um, so basically it's 9, 10, 11, and 12 on the inside row of the GPIO and 10 and 12 on the outside row, row of the GPIO pins. And basically what you're using is the SPI bus for uh, instead of the other bus that's too slow. Anyway, you're going to hook it up. <laughs> there you go. And... Then you're going to have to do a few things, right? You know, once you get it hooked up, of course, it's not that easy. You can't just run the commands. Why? Because now you've got to do some software installation on your Pi. Um, so let me see if I can get this a little bit closer to the computer here. Um, you're going to go and install this thing called Numpy. <laughs> uh, and the Numpy package will take a while to install. Then you're just going to basically run down this, this kind of checklist. You're going to go... Uh, sudo apt update, uh, then you're going to sudo apt install the numpy and the python dependencies, the matplot library, um, and then, then you're going to have to click on this link. You can see my mouse right over here. It says RPI microcontroller document, and you're going to come over here to the microcontroller document and follow this checklist for configuring your Raspberry Pi to be a secondary control unit for your printer. So you're going to install a script, it's going to consist of three commands. You're going to enable SPI on your Raspi config. Then you're going to build the microcontroller code, which is going to look an awful lot like you're building a, config, a Clipper configuration file uh, or a firmware file. Although all you're going to do is select the micro microcontroller architecture to Linux. You're going to hit save exit, and then you're going to do these three commands where you're going to stop the Clipper service. You're going to make the flash. You're going to start the Clipper service. And... I see it says that you may run into this error when attempting to connect and then you need to add your user to the, to the particular group here. Just run this command and that way you know you're not going to worry about the permission denied on that particular, uh, that particular step. This is where you stop and this is one of the reasons I'm making a video. You can spend a lot of hours trying to figure out whether you're going to get a sample configuration, a multi-MCU sample configuration. It's, they really should have clarified this. You don't need any of this below this particular page to do what you're going to do here. Um, in fact, you're probably going to make yourself go crazy and things aren't going to work when you try to like add these things and add different files on into your Clipper directory on your Pi to think that you need another config file for your Pi. You need another config now that it's an MCU, blah, blah, blah. It's just a bunch of, it's a mess. 
Can you tell I'm a little bit upset? Because I lost a lot of my life on this when all they needed to say was go to this page and go down to where you build and install the microcontroller code and then you can come back to this other, back to the measuring resonances. So just go down to the halfway through the page and then come right back, right? Once you've actually configured it to be a, an MCU, um, you're gonna add, and I suggest just taking this, copy and pasting it into your printer config on Clipper. If you've, got a, if you've got a Thinker SE, the only thing you're gonna change after you stick it in your printer config is your probe point is gonna be 150, 150, 20, not 100, 120, if you want it at the middle of the bed. It's a 300 by 300 bed, 150, 150, 20, makes sense, right? Um, you're gonna do that. You're basically going to then restart Clipper. Okay, easy to say, not so easy to do. It, it usually takes me five or six restarts to get it to finally understand what's going on and that it's going to be running with, a, with an additional MCU. Uh, sometimes you have to just restart your Pi altogether, restart your printer altogether. Uh, eventually it'll work. Uh, I'll just let you know that just persistence was the day. I continued hitting firmware restart and restart, continued restarting things. Eventually I got everything up and running. And eventually you'll be greeted with your normal... Clipper uh, fluid, or the, I use fluid, but uh, this is the fluid screen for controlling Clipper for my Thinker SE, and I was greeted with this particular screen. So I ran a few commands, and this is right off the measuring resonances page, but I'm actually going to show you the commands that I run that I ran so that you see them. Um, so go back up here. The first thing I did was I ran a query. Um, I'm going to put my I'm going to put it right over here, this accelerometer underscore query. It's on the, trust me, you don't have to memorize this. It's on the memorizing, re or excuse me, measuring resonances page. It's going to tell you, hey, come down. Now you need to check your setup and you're going to run, um, I'm sorry, um, accelerometer query, which is right here on the screen. Once I did that, I can tell everything's working because it gave me some values. It gave me an X value of zero, a Y of 1682 point some odd, 11014 point some odd for the Z. So I'm like, it's reading the accelerometer. Great, awesome. Then I just test, I put in the test, uh, the test command, test resonances axis X. And of course I was an idiot. I didn't home the axis first. I thought it would just go to that particular point, 150, 150, 20, but you need to home your axis first. So then I homed and then I hit test resonances axis X. And what it did, is it disables input shaper, goes to the middle of the bed, not in that order, and then it basically tests frequencies from 5 all the way up to 133 hertz. All right? When it gets done with the testing at 133 hertz, it re-enables your input shaper, and it waits for calculations, and then it writes to a particular file, which is this temp resonances. I don't need to memorize it, because we're going to go back to the uh, measuring resonances page for Clipper and figure out what to do with it. Then I typed it in for the Y. Now, what did I have to do before I typed it into the Y? I had to take my connections, which were up here. See if I get my finger in here, which were up here for measuring my X axis. I aligned the little X axis appropriately with my X axis. Um, and I'll have, a, I'll have a link for this mount. This was done by our own Dana Olson in the Area 1 Facebook page page. This is an uh, E3D V6 mount, but it's got a, a little like a tool holder here, and it works just perfectly for uh, printing off his little accelerometer holder and tightening it in there. So X-axis has got a real nice mount. Fortunately, the Y-axis is not as easy because uh, these beds do not, uh, they don't have like just screw holes sitting around for you to be able to screw in the Y-axis on the, on the bed here the Y-axis accelerometer. So I had to tape it down pretty strongly with uh, electrical tape after mounting it on uh, just a little mount that I found on Thingiverse uh, for ADXL 345 mount. Um, and then I had to move the wires down here because now I want to do the Y-axis, which on these accelerometers, I'll look at this one because it's easy to, easier to read it. If you look at it, there's a little uh, there's a little graphing thing by the screw. The x-axis goes left to right, y-axis goes forward and back, um, which makes sense. Uh, and uh, and so basically, I, I mounted this exactly the same way, but now it's going to be testing the y-axis instead. Uh, plugged in the plug or plugged in the wires, typed in test test resonances uh, y our axis y, and sure enough, it went right ahead and did it. Um, you can see it testing e it was testing each of the frequencies all the way up through 133 hertz. 
I actually was watching the bed while I was doing this. It was bouncing around a little bit. Um, and then when it gets done, it writes uh, the resonance data to this file. So what are you going to do now that you've got things done? Well, measuring resonances is going to tell you that once you actually have everything done, there's a set of commands that you can issue in a terminal. I just use putty, right? So this set of commands, and again, sorry for, let me see if I can get this angle just a little bit better for you. There we go. So this set of commands, I ran them twice here just because I didn't like the way the screen did, but basically this set of commands will basically print out the will print out what it did. Now we're going to look at a graphical representation in just a second, but you don't have to get the graphical representation. This basically shows me on my x-axis. It tested these particular smoothing shapers, uh, the ZV shaper, MZV shaper, EI, two hump EI, three hump EI at different frequencies. And then it recommends that I use a shaper of MZV at 53.2 uh, hertz for the x-axis. It's actually pretty nice for a big printer, but the x-axis should be pretty tight. Um, what your problem is going to be is the y-axis because you've got this big bed that gets slung around. That's why, it's why they call it a bed slinger. Um, and there's a lot of mass on it, and it's, and it's fairly easy to move that mass. So you're not going to get a super high uh, unless you've done some, unless you've just got your belt way too tight and a bunch of other things going on. So then it did the y-axis, runs the that command that we got off the uh, resonance or the measuring resonances screen from the Clipper documents. Uh, run that command for calibrating the Y, and it shows me where it fitted the different shapers, and then it recommends, again, the MZV uh, shaper, but this time at 29.6 hertz, or really 30 hertz. So, that's all you really need if you just want to go from there. I actually wanted to look at, when it does this, it also generates a PNG file, um, and so what you would need to do to do the PNG file is you need to open up when... Uh, um, need to open up some way of actually pulling that file off of the Pi. I actually, I'm not going to open it right now, but I use WinSCP um, right here where my mouse is. Um, that actually opens up a, well, I'll actually show it to you. Um, open it up. Um, I will log in to my ThinkerPi. Uh, it now shows me stuff here. Um, I've already got it open to the temp folder since that's where it writes this data. And you can see here's where it wrote the two files when it was doing the testing right here. And then right below it, now there's a PNG file. I just drug those to my uh, desktop and I have those already open. So if I go to my X calibration here, you can see um, that uh, the X axis is my pink and we can see that that pink just really peaks um, there just above 50 Hertz, between 50 and 55 Hertz, which makes sense. And then up here it's got what it fitted and what it what it recommends. And it says if MZV at 53.2 is the recommended shaper. Um, and it says that I could have acceleration all the way up to 8,300 uh, millimeters per second squared. Well, that's nice. The Y axis isn't gonna let me do that at all. So uh, so now that's my X shaper. Let's take a look at my Y, uh, my Y results here. Um, and here we see, and the Y is in the green, that we had a pretty good shake there um, right around 30 hertz. And in fact, the way it's showing here on the graph is it's slightly over 30 hertz um, at, that, at that particular level. Um, and then it fits the different shapers. Um, so one thing, uh, this is getting long, and I'll, I'll cut it off here in just a second, but I did want to show you how to do this, is that, uh, is that I looked at what it fitted, and I really want to kind of try the EI shaper on the um, on the y-axis because one, it seems to match better with the actual resonance of the y-axis that was measured. Um, secondly, it's got it, it reduces the vibrations just a little bit better. Doesn't add too much shaping. The only gotcha is, and if you can look real close there at the EI line, is that the max acceleration that they're recommending there is 1800 which, since I'm going to Clipper, I kind of really want to get my acceleration up there. So I still think I'm going to stay with the MZV Shaper, which gives me an acceleration less than or equal to 2,600. Um, I'm probably, you know, 20, if I can get to 2,400, 2,500, I'm pretty happy. Uh, that's pretty good with this kind of printer. I just didn't want to have to go all the way down to 1,800. So um, I'll, I'll probably stick with MZV, but I'll probably stick it on just, I'll probably round it right to 30 hertz 
Uh, for a number of reasons, one, the EI and everything else seems to measure in the, the visual graph seems to measure that that's really the, the kind of the center point of the uh, of the actual resonance there. One and then two, um, we got to, you know, I flew airplanes. I kind of understand a few things about physics since I was not able to mount the accelerometer on a hard point and then really tighten it. Um, basically, I've got tape in various ways, trying to secure that to this bed that was then shaking. So the chance that it measured the resonances just slightly lower, because there's probably a bit of slop here, uh, that measured the resonances just slightly lower than what's actual the resonance of the hardware of the of the hardware of the bed here that isn't taped but actually secured um, is pretty high. So I would probably uh, probably look at about 31. Uh, looking at the EI numbers there, 31.6 and the MZV numbers of 29.6, I'm probably going to, I'm probably just going to, you know, maybe, maybe cut those in the middle um, and put the MZV shaper at 30.6 um, and, uh, and get my acceleration. Looks like I can put my acceleration up to about 2,600 um, without any issues. So uh, that, I, I, I might give myself a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a buffer there and put it at 2,500 and uh, not push things. So that's it. That's how to measure your um, measure and record, figure out what uh, your your resonance, measure your resonances and figure out what you should put in the input shaper section in the printer config. Your last step here, I'm going to close out of that. It, your last step obviously is to get into your uh, printer config um, and actually enter this data. Uh, where you enter this data, I'll go ahead and open up my printer config here, is you have an input shaper section. So there's going to be a shaper frequency X and a shaper frequency Y. The shaper type is MZV, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we, know that uh, we know that X is going to be at 53, I think it was 0.2. All right, let's make sure. Calibrate X, MZV at 53.2. And calibrate Y, I said I was going to put 30.6. Right, and then the shaper type is MZV. So this is uh, this is pretty, pretty easy. I can save and restart. It may actually bark at me a little bit here on the restart, uh, just because... Um, Again, the accelerometer is hooked up and it's trying to use the MCU as a secondary MCU. So there's all kinds of uh, opportunity for it to decide it doesn't like it. Nope, took it first time. Um, and now my input shaper should be taken care of. Um, last but not least, let's not forget that we just tuned our acceleration as well um, in the sense of, uh, of what we could probably do. I had it at 2200. I'm, I'm going to stick that up to uh, 2400. I think I'll, I'll do that as a... Uh, and then my Excel to D cell at 1200. I think that's probably a nice compromise um, with uh, with being able to bump my acceleration up just a little bit with this uh, better um, better deal. But anyway, there you have it. I uh, hope you uh, and I and I hope like again if you have any questions, you'll let me know about hooking it up. There's the pie, getting it mounted on um, your hot end for your x axis and your bed itself for the y axis measurement, and then getting it all set up. Don't forget. Your friend is this measuring resonances uh, document for Clipper, which is in the links below. Um, I'll also have a link to the STL for, STL for this particular hot end uh, mount that Dana put together, um, and uh, and some some links to both Clipper and Fluid and some of these other things that I'm using in this particular uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it. It's been longer, but I wanted to explain how to do this because I had to figure out how to do it. Um, even folks that had done it before and gave me advice basically just pointed me to the site and it turned out that some of the stuff you need to know isn't on the site, like when to stop creating the secondary MCU. Again, when you get done halfway through when you doing this secondary MCU way back at the beginning and you get to the point that you add the Pi user to the TTY group right here um, after you flashed that uh, new firmware onto your Pi uh, as the secondary MCU, you do not need to do the remaining configuration point. Leave that off. Don't go there. Um, and that really should be added to the measuring resonances document. It needs to, you know, that needs to not 
uh, be something that people are worrying about or losing time over. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Enjoy uh, your day. Happy 3D printing and see you next time.